Welcome to the second episode of Bug Busters, where we track down TF2's bugs and prove whether or not they still exist and how they work. I'm really glad everyone seemed to like the first video, cause, cause I think the series is fun. And in that first video, I asked who you guys wanted to see next. The most popular request seemed to be Spy. So, I'm doing Scout. Uh, yeah, so I've had a lot of things going on at once, and I did want to make another bug video, but I didn't have that much time to do it. So I figured Spy's bugs are probably a little bit more complex, but Scout stuff is... Scout stuff is pretty simple, I could do that quick. It's just that I somehow forgot that Scout has like a million weapons, and this ended up being way longer than I thought it would be. So that's what I get for not listening to comments. Next time though, next time I will. For now, we'll just do Scout. And our first bug says that if an enemy is killed via shove damage, it will count as the Scout finishing them off instead of a kill. The shortstop's shove deals one damage on contact, and yes, getting a shove kill will count as finishing off the player that was shoved. And yeah, pretty much everything about the existence of the shove on the shortstop is confusing. It doesn't have a kill icon and deals one damage, so it's almost never gonna actually get a kill, so I don't know, why does it deal damage? Why does it exist? I don't know. Our second shortstop bug says that at high field of view, the bullets from the shortstop can be seen in front of the screen. The field of view could either be the actual field of view or the weapon view model field of view. I tested both, but I assume since it didn't specify, it just means the regular field of view. But I'm also not really sure what it means by in front of the screen. Like the bottom, the top, actually physically in front of your monitor. Does it mean the bullets are just kind of hanging out in front of you like, like they're floating? Is it when you're firing? Is it while you're reloading? I have no idea. I've always played with the highest field of view, and I assume most people do too, but I haven't noticed anything. And I see no difference with the higher view model field of view either, so unless I'm completely missing something, which is possible, I, I think I have to say this one is busted. But luckily, our final shortstop bug is much easier to test, and it claims that if a player has their model quality set to medium or lower, the scout will not break the shortstop during reloading or inspecting. So all I did was I set my model quality to medium, not that I've ever done that before, and yeah, it doesn't open up to reload. Or inspect. Moving on to the soda popper, this first bug says that the hype meter can be activated during end of round humiliation. So if you're on the losing team, you obviously can't attack and enter a fleeing state when you lose. However, if you have full hype with the soda popper when the round ends, you can actually activate it during humiliation. It's not exactly going to do you a lot of good, but it's, it's pretty funny, I guess it helps you run away. When viewed in the class selection screen, a shell can be seen behind the Criticola portion of the soda popper. This one is also true, and it's pretty easily noticeable. When going over Scout on the class select screen, if the soda popper is equipped on your Scout loadout, you can in fact see the soda popper shell on the outside of the gun. When the height meter is activated and the player visits the resupply locker to switch weapons, the soda popper's effect will be present on the swapped weapon until the hype runs out. If you have full hype, activate it, and change your weapon primary by visiting the resupply cabinet, you can have the hype's effect without actually having the soda popper. It'll just wear off like normal after time, so it's not exactly very practical, but it is something you could do. And our last soda popper bug says that equipping the soda popper along with the atomizer will cause the multi-jump sound effect to play on triple jump even though hype mode has not been activated. And this bug actually predates the atomizer change in Jungle Inferno. Since that change, the atomizer will now always make the multi-jump sound effect on triple jump when it's deployed, and will do so regardless of what other weapons you have equipped. And that's more or less all the known bugs associated with Scout's primary weapons, so let's go on to Scout's secondaries, starting with Bonk. The first Bonk bug says that if a player commits suicide while under the effects of Bonk Atomic Punch, the kill is awarded to the last player on the enemy team to deal damage against the original player, even if their character was temporarily invulnerable during the time the damage was taken. And yes, if you take damage under the effects of Bonk Atomic Punch, or, you know, dodge a hit while under the effects of Bonk Atomic Punch, and for whatever reason that Bonk Scout suicides himself, it counts as you finishing him off despite not actually damaging him. So it's true, but not really too likely to happen. Despite being unable to capture a control point while under the effects of Bonk Atomic Punch, if a scout is standing on the point when it's captured, the scout will still receive points for the capture. Obviously enough, a scout can't capture objectives while under the effects of Bonk. But, if you're on the point when it's captured by your teammates while you're under the effects of Bonk, you'll still get credit for the capture even though you didn't actually contribute towards it. The next bug says that if a soldier performs a kamikaze taunt near a scout who is under the effects of Bonk, the game will register that the soldier has killed the scout, 
even though the scout has taken no damage. And this one is not true, at least not anymore. The scout survives, there's no kill notice for the scout, and it just acts as if the soldier kamikazed himself like normal. If a scout is knocked into the air when the taunt is in play, the scout will consume bonk but no effect will be applied. If you use bonk at all, you've probably had this happen to you. You start drinking, get knocked into the air, and you get no effect and you also lose your bonk meter. It's obviously true, and it's probably a bug, but it could also possibly be an intended effect. I mean, the drinking animation does count as a taunt, and getting knocked into the air while taunting will cancel the taunt, but if Scout immediately got the effects upon being knocked into the air, that would kinda help him. So I'm sure there's some ways they could fix this, but as it is now, it just kinda punishes Bonk Scouts for not picking the right spot to drink, which I don't think is a really huge deal. This next bug says that after the Bonk Atomic Punch slowness effect takes place, it's possible to retain the original speed by pressing the left and right buttons repeatedly. When Bonk's effects wear off, if you took damage, you'll be slowed for 5 seconds based on how much damage you absorbed. I thought at first that maybe tapping left and right would make it wear off faster, but no. Check this out. I drink Bonk, I take a bunch of damage, and I get slowed down from Scout's normal 400 hammer units a second to 225.88. But if I press left and right while also running forward, it starts to go back up. And that's really interesting, it kinda lets you bypass that downside. And you know what's also interesting, is that when Bonk came out, it actually had a very similar downside that it has now, except it always slowed you by 56% regardless of how much damage you took. And I was watching a video about Bonk from 2009, and it mentioned the exact same bug where you could bypass the slowdown in the exact same way. It's pretty weird, but yeah, this one works. Okay, so uh, the wiki claims that, quote, when under the effect, the scout will not be able to switch weapons until it is worn off, is a bug. Uh, of course that is true, you're not able to switch weapons, but I'm almost entirely sure that's an intended effect of the weapon. After drinking Bonk, you'll switch to whatever weapon you had out previously, either your primary or your melee. I don't believe you've ever been able to switch, and there's not really a whole lot of reason why you'd need to. Uh, I guess it's possible that it's a bug, but I think it's more likely an intended effect, so, uh, bleh. When throwing the Mad Milk on the ground or on a ramp surface or while Scout is running, there's a possibility that Mad Milk will roll first before shattering, delaying the effects that come with it. I couldn't actually get it to roll on ramp surfaces or while running, but it will always roll on these platforms on Nucleus. So I'm pretty sure there are probably other areas in the game that will have a similar effect on Mad Milk, I just don't really know where they are. It's at the very least partially confirmed. And despite being a reskin, the mutated milk somehow has more bugs associated with it. The first one claiming that taunting while holding the mutated milk will cause the bread monster inside the jar to stop moving. And it does. Kinda. The bread monster will always stop moving after you taunt, but it will always begin to move again a few seconds later. And it will begin to move again without the need to switch weapons. And I tested this in third person too, and it doesn't appear to stop moving at all from that perspective. So I guess this one also counts as partially confirmed? It doesn't stop moving completely, but it will pause for a few seconds. The mutated milk has slightly different physics compared to mad milk, making it fly further when thrown. Zigzag actually has a great video demonstrating this, and I'll have a link in the description if you want to check that out in more detail, but yes, it is true. I'm just going to try to demonstrate it on a regular map to the best of my abilities. So here are two mad milk thrown at roughly the same angle at roughly the same time, and you can see they land in pretty much the exact same spot. But if I do the same thing with one mad milk and one mutated milk, the mutated milk will clearly go just a little bit further, and it does that every time. So mutated milk straight upgrade confirms. But realistically, it's so minor that it's going to make almost no difference in an actual match. In the loadout menu, the mutated milk uses the animation of the all-class melee weapons instead of using its own unique animation. And I've had the mutated milk since it came out, and I can't say I've ever really even noticed this. But yeah, Scout's hand goes like right inside the jar. It's something pretty obvious if you're looking for it, but easily missed if you're not. And our last mutated milk bug claims that if the player switches weapons immediately after the mutated milk is thrown, the projectile will become the mad milk instead. So here's the mutated milk being thrown like normal, where you automatically switch to your previous weapon afterwards. And everything looks fine. But if you manually switch weapons right after throwing the mutated milk, it will become regular mad milk. Here's a third person demonstration of both. It's... it's strange. The winger has one known bug, and it's... it's a pretty good one. 
When jumping with the winger active, if the scout crouches before landing on the ground, then continues to crouch, this may cause the player model to use the idle animation while holding the winger. It's actually really easy to pull off, but there's no way of seeing it from first person. And all you need to do is jump in the air with the winger active, press crouch before you hit the ground, and continue crouching when you're on the ground. Visually, you won't actually be crouching, and when you move, you just slide across the floor. But in first person, everything seems normal. It's funny, it's a good one, I like it. Should be fixed, but I like it. So, the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol page on the wiki says that the attributes on the Pocket Pistol are listed as when weapon is active, despite all the attributes being effects relating to the weapon itself, and thus clearly only occurring when the weapon is active. And I'll just say that, yeah, that is the case. But can you really call an unnecessary line of text that was a carryover from the previous version of the stats a bug? It should be removed, sure, but it's not even wrong. Obviously the stats on the Pocket Pistol are only in effect when the weapon is active. I don't think I'd say this is a bug so much as it is a, a note or, or maybe trivia or something. It's true though. And now onto the flying guillotine, and this one actually has quite a few. The first one says that the cleaver can go through thin walls, such as setup gates, when thrown at the correct angle. Now I wasn't really able to get it to go through a startup gate, but that's probably just because I couldn't find the right angle. I was able to find the right angle on this wall on pipeline, so it just kind of depends on the position, but it will go right through. Reflected flying guillotines do not deal mini crit damage to enemies. And no they do not. It's also kind of interesting that if a reflected guillotine kills, it directly counts as a flamethrower kill. Weird. Victims killed and turned to ragdolls are sent flying at a strange angle sideways. Yeah they do, and it's funny, so I can't really complain. Alright, this next one is kind of a long one, and it claims that holding down the alt fire while throwing the flying guillotine will stop the scout's weapon from changing while the button is held. If the button is held down until the weapon is recharged, it will be thrown again, but no animation will be played for it. Additionally, other players will still see the scout holding the flying guillotine while the button is held. Here's the scout throwing the cleaver with the primary fire, and everything looks fine. And now here's the same thing with the alt fire, and it works exactly how it's described. It's... it's weird. This next one doesn't go exactly how the bug claims it does. It says that if the flying guillotine is thrown at a very high area, the sound effect of the guillotine hitting the ground will play before it hits the ground. Okay, so there's a few things to note here. This bug is talking about the clanging noise the guillotine makes if it hits an object like a wall. The thud of the weapon hitting the ground afterwards is different and always appears to work normally. If you throw the guillotine directly upward into the sky, it'll still make that clang noise as if it's hit something while the cleaver is still in the air. I'm guessing that for whatever reason it makes this noise at like the apex of the throw right before it's about to come down, or maybe it's hitting the skybox, but I don't really know. But what's a bit more interesting is if you somehow get a scout high enough and he throws the guillotine downward, it will make that clang noise before actually hitting the ground. Which I think is what the bug meant. It says thrown at a very high area, when it really probably should say from a very high area. But I guess any instance of the cleaver making an impact noise without actually touching an object is probably a bug either way, so... So this one's partially confirmed, I guess, but I would just word it differently. This next one goes for both the Holy Mackerel and the Unarmed Combat. And it says that if a player assists a fish slash arm kill, the kill icon will not be highlighted in the kill feed like other kills and assists would be. And yep, I assist this kill, I even do most of the work, and while I am credited, it's not highlighted on my end like an assist normally would be. The Sandman has a lot of bugs, but this one... this one I have no idea what it means. It says that rarely, if the player throws the ball at the wall while the scout is in close range, and they pick it up off the ground, let it refill, or go to the resupply locker, the recharge bar will be full, but the baseball will be missing, making it unusable until the player dies. So, sometimes, just hitting the ball close to a wall will make the ball unusable? I guess? This is actually one of the oldest Sandman bugs listed on the wiki, going as far back as 2011. And I would honestly be surprised if the person who added this even has footage of it or actively still plays the game. It's been a long time since this bug was written down, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's been fixed, but I can't really prove or disprove it with the information given. Since it uses the term rarely, we don't really know the exact circumstances that trigger the effect, so who really knows? Other than that I guess you need to shoot it close to a wall, but I, that could mean anything. So if anybody has footage of this or can recreate it, just let me know and I'll show it in the next video. But for now, I think I have to put this one as unconfirmed. Sometimes, if an enemy pyro uses their compression blast to send the ball back and it hits a friendly player, 
The scout may play a voice line implying the ball had hit an enemy. And despite doing it many, many times, I was not once able to get it to work. But I also couldn't get Scout to play any of his stun enemy voice lines at all. So I'm guessing that those particular voice clips were tied specifically to stunning an enemy and not just hitting them with the baseball. And since the same man doesn't stun anymore, it appears he will never say those lines anymore. And that's super lame, but it also means that this bug is no longer true because of it, so it's, uh, it's busted. And while testing all these reflex shenanigans, we also discovered that if the pyro reflects the Sandman's ball at one of the scout's teammates, that teammate will still be slowed, but they won't take any damage from the ball. And I'm actually not sure if this was always the case, but it's not listed on the wiki currently. And it's kind of similar to another Rap Assassin bug, but we'll get to that later. In certain instances, where the ball recharge meter is full and the scout holds the ball ready, it cannot be launched. And I don't know what those instances are, so I can't test it. Next! Slowing opponents while they're taunting will make them able to move at the reduced slow speed before the taunt's completion, unless a moonshot is achieved. So this bug actually predates the removal of the stun on the Sandman, and as far as I could tell, whoever was editing the page just swapped the word stunning for slowing. It also mentions moonshots, which is a maximum range hit, but the only thing a moonshot does now is deal more damage when back in the day it used to actually completely immobilize you. As it is now, if you're hit by the Sandman's ball while you're taunting, you just move slower when the taunt is over. And if you're using a moving taunt, like the box trot for example, you just move slower while you're taunting, and that's it. If the player throws the baseball directly on the feet, the player will immediately retrieve the ball, leading to the scout showing the animation, but not actually launching the ball. This one is worded kinda weird, but yeah, it's true. The animation will look as if the scout is hitting the baseball forward, when he's actually hitting it directly downward and immediately picking it back up. The Sandman Ball won't have any effect on a target who's been ubercharged at least once. This is actually true, and I think it's one of the weirdest scout bugs there is. So let's see, I hit this heavy with the ball, and it works like normal. And then the medic ubercharges him, and the next time it just bounces right off. And the medic also becomes immune to it, but this does only happen with the stock medigun. And there's one more slightly interesting thing I want to mention about the Sandman, but it's not really a bug. If you're playing Scout with the Sandman equipped and have no ball, and an enemy Scout also uses the Sandman and hits you with their ball, you will immediately pick up that ball. This also works when you're using the Rap Assassin, and picking up a grounded baseball will also refill your ornament too. But hitting a Sandman Scout with the ornament does not restore his baseball. The health pack dropped by the Candy Cane will not restore any Heavy's lunchbox recharge bar. This one is also weird, so let's take a look. This Scout with the Candy Cane equipped kills me, so I drop a health kit. I also find a hat from Random Drop, but that's not really relevant. And then when I come out of spawn, I throw my sandwich, I pick up that health kit, and everything works as it should. My sandwich bar is completely replenished. So it's busted, right? Not exactly. We tried again, but instead of killing me, the scout kills one of my teammates. And it turns out that that health kit does not restore the sandwich bar. After trying it out a few more times, it turns out that if the heavy is killed and picks up the health kit that he drops, it'll work like normally. But if it's dropped by anybody else, it won't. Huh. I guess this one is kinda... half true? Also something we came across while recording is that suiciding a scout with the candy cane equipped will make you drop a small health kit. I mean, the description doesn't say who you have to kill, uh, I guess yourself also counts. However, killing yourself through fall damage will not produce the same result. If the player switches to the grappling hook, then back to the atomizer, the triple jump will still be delayed at normal holster time. So the atomizer deploys 50% slower, and the grappling hook for manpower holsters 80% faster. So when switching from the grappling hook to the atomizer, it'll still be faster than it would be otherwise. But in Jungle Inferno, when they first reworked the weapon, you could actually get the triple jump by just very briefly switching to the atomizer. So basically, if the atomizer was still in its deploy animation, you could still get the third jump. And then it was later fixed so that the atomizer needed to be completely deployed, so it no longer allowed you to bypass that downside. But forcing that delay still applies to the rare scenarios where the atomizer actually deploys faster, which I believe only happens with grappling hook. Rarely, the triple jump will fail to deploy. Uh, again, the fact that this says rarely makes this really hard to prove or disprove. Sometimes if you tap the jump button multiple times really fast, you'll technically perform the triple jump, but you won't really gain much distance from it, so maybe that could be misconstrued as it failing? It's easier to see exactly when you triple jump in third person because of the purple smoke, but messing around with it, I just could not get it to work. Or, I mean, I couldn't get it to fail would be more accurate. Our last atomizer bug says that occasionally, if the player jumps into the water, it'll still be counted as airborne, therefore making the attacks from the atomizer mini crit until the player touches the ground. But it actually goes further than that. The atomizer will always mini crit when the user is swimming. 
As long as you're not touching the ground of whatever area you're swimming in, it appears to always deal mini crit damage. So hey, that's a new upside for the Atomizer, I guess. And lastly, we have the Rap Assassin with two bugs. The first one says that if a player is hit by a friendly scout's ornament that was deflected by an enemy pyro, the player will take no damage even though the bleed icon still appears on the HUD. And this is another one of those partially true ones, because you do actually take very minor damage from the reflected ornament. However, despite the bleed icon appearing on your HUD, you won't take any bleed damage. The Rap Assassin's Bulb cannot pass through certain areas that it should pass through, causing it to shatter out of thin air. Some examples given of where this occurs are the stairs in the middle of Turbine and the control point of Nucleus. And both of these examples are still true. The Turbine one isn't really that big of a deal because it's a very specific area, but with the Nucleus one it basically means you can't hit anybody who's on the point with your ornament, and that's pretty dumb. And that was Bug Busters Episode 2. And did I mention that this video was sponsored again by the Ridge Wallet? The small, durable wallet that's made with RFID blocking technology. So you can protect those cards that are important to you, like this 10% off Applebee's keycard that only works in Parsippany, New Jersey. And like that Applebee's card, you yourself can get one of these in several different styles for 10% off, with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash breakfast. But okay, before before I lose my voice, I'm gonna give a special thanks to Cool Stuff, Varric, and Captain Forex, as well as all my other patrons. And, uh, yeah. Alright. So, until next time, peace out, dogs! Yeah.